So this is my very first trip to Africa. It's my first safari ever, and I'm really excited to be here, especially because I get to do it alongside my dad. And he's been coming to Africa for 20 years. He's been all over. Right now we're hunting in the Eastern Cape of South Africa with Hunter's Hill Safaris. And the reason he chose to bring me here is pretty simple. Hunter's Hill is just over the top. Everything about it is really nice. The people are great. It's safe. We're comfortable. But most importantly, we can hunt everything we want to hunt right here. We never have to leave Hunter's Hill. What Hunter's Hill has is one giant piece of property with all the species right here. If you're going to go with another outfitter in South Africa, ask that outfitter before you go, say, how much time are we going to spend driving back and forth every day? Because many times they will not tell you. They may drive two or three hours over to that place to hunt for a kudu, and then two or three hours back that night, or two or three hours that way to hunt for a blessed buck, and two or three hours back, and you're spending all your time driving back and forth and not hunting. At Hunter's Hill, you spend your time hunting. I'm Greg Harvey, the owner of Hunter's Hill Safaris in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Our property is very extensive. We have 70 plus different species. Keith Warren's been hunting with us on numerous occasions and it's quite exciting that he's now brought his daughter to hunt now, um, this time with him. So Maddie's been hunting with me ever since she was that big. Literally, she, she doesn't remember her first hunting trip. Uh, she's paid her dues. She's, she's experienced more time hunting at uh, her early age than uh, most adults have, to be honest with you. Uh, she's, a, she's a great shot. She is passionate about the outdoors and conservation. And uh, she's always longed to come here. So this will be an experience I want to make sure she'll never forget. Uh, it's mighty windy. It's our first day in Africa, so we're going to make sure that the gun sighted in. This is the Seneca Dragon Claw. It's a 50 cal. I've hunted a lot with it. I've taken down some bears, some hogs, but I just want to get confident with it, make sure it's sighted in still, because it had a long trip just like us. Perfect. Yeah, what do you say? Done. So we're over here for hopefully to take a Cape Buffalo. But to get things started, I got a little surprise for you. Uh, we're gonna go for something that's a little bit bigger than a Cape Buffalo. Mm -hmm. It's a water buffalo. And the reason why I want her to go for water buffalo, I wanna see if she can, uh, if, if she's got the grit to stand up to it. If she's not scared, if she's uh, brave enough to stand up to it and make the shot and make the shot count and take it down with one shot. Because if she can't do it on a water buffalo, I'm not going to risk letting her hunt for a Cape buffalo with an air rifle. My name is Johan Dreyer, and I'm the general manager at Hunter's Hill Safaris. And uh, I'm really excited to have Keith and Maddie here, and I'm going to be taking you out for a water buffalo tomorrow. You having a fun time? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. There's nothing to not like. There's dogs everywhere. The people are friendly. I've seen a ton of game and I haven't even started hunting yet. So I'm excited. I've got a surprise for you. A good one or a bad one? Oh yeah, it's a good one. What I'm gonna do is I've already got it lined up with Johan and I'm gonna have Johan take you out for a water buffalo. A water buffalo? A water buffalo smokes a cake buffalo as far as size goes. Seriously? Smokes it, I'm not kidding. What, you scared? No, I guess just go big or go home. That's right, go big or hunt, go home. So tomorrow, you're gonna go big. We're walking up this creek, trying to be really stealthy. The wind's perfectly in our favor. And we spotted some water buffalo a couple of hundred yards away on the other side of the creek. is in our favor, but we spooked a Cape Buffalo and started running. So hopefully the Cape Buffalo didn't get those uh, water buffalo up and we'll have some good chances. Sit tight for a bit. 
All right, we just made a stock up on some water buffalo down a ravine and the wind was perfectly in our favor. We creeped up over this cliff and one of the females got wind of us. She saw us and they all took off, but that was pretty cool. We were really close. I mean, it, the whole experience was awesome. So I'm looking forward to more like it. <laughs> we don't want to spook them anymore because they took off in full force. So we're going to come back here tomorrow morning. We're creating a little hide um, so we can sit right on the edge of the ridge and have some good cover, wait for them to come in, and hopefully a bull will present a good shot opportunity. Tomorrow morning, those water buffalo don't stand a chance. It's me in this hide against them. So meanwhile, Maddie is out uh, with Johan trying to track down a, a big water buffalo and, and stick it with an arrow. I gotta tell you something, there's a lot of animals over here and I've been fortunate enough to be able to take a lot of them, but there's one that I really, really, really like. It's baboons. And I don't know why that is. They're smart, they're a pest over here. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, while Maddie is out with Johan, I'm gonna be set up uh, trying to take a baboon with the Seneca Dragon Claw. It's a pretty cool setup right here. It's overlooking a gigantic valley. The baboons live in the mountains behind me right here. Hopefully somebody will come down for a snack. I've got the gun cocked. I've got the arrow in it. I've got it pointed at the bait. You may be thinking, bait? You doggone right, bait. Baboons love oranges. Everything just about loves oranges. And so we've got reconnaissance cameras on the bait piles, making sure the baboons are hitting it. And this particular spot is just now a waiting game. Will one come in and give me a shot? Looky here. Look who just showed up. All right, let me get the gun up on him. Come on, look at him with that orange. All right, wait till he stands up. Here we go. Got him. One down. He comes over to those oranges and picks it up, and man, even I was impressed. <laughs> he didn't go far. I mean, it was it was pretty impressive, if you ask me. Well, it's the third week of June, and although in the states it is uh, summertime, over here in Africa, in South Africa to be specific, it's wintertime. It's downright cold, and this is what the baboon looks like. You know, I. I wound up, I, I stayed put this evening after shooting this guy, and I thought maybe something else would come in, but it didn't, but uh, so anyway, I, I uh, got out here and, and I wanna show you the baboons. I mean, take a look. I mean, his, his, uh, he's got some nice teeth, but he's also got some corn in his mouth, clearly, because he's been coming to bait. But if you take a look at his ears, I mean, he's got human-like ears, and look at the paws on them. I mean, the, the hands, I mean, literally, they've got a thumb, and they've got their little fingers. I mean, and long hair, really long hair. Now, these guys got a, they have unbelievable vision and uh, a long snout, really good sense of smell. And they're cool. I mean, coming over to Africa, it, for me, baboons are one of the kind of things that when you come with uh, Hunter's Hill, they, they let you have baboons for free, as many as you want to kill. I mean, they're free. I want to point something out. Uh, I'm going to put in a big time plug for my equipment. Uh, this is a 50 caliber Dragon Claw air rifle, and I have taken everything from a from a, a small hog all the way up to a Cape Buffalo. And I actually took the Cape Buffalo here a couple of years ago with it. This is a beast of an air gun, 50 caliber. But take a look at the stand that is on. It's a brand new piece of equipment. Without this, there's no way that I could have been ready when this baboon came in to give me a shot. So anyway, I'm happy with him. Uh, the safari is young. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna get out and I very well may come back to this exact same spot because the Reconics is saying that this place is getting hit big time. So the next day we got set up in our blind. I had to spray down with scent killer before because yes, these buffalo are not near as aggressive as Cape buffalo, but they've got a really good sense of smell and it's gonna be a close shot because I'm using an air gun. All right, we just got situated in this little hide that we built yesterday. We had a close encounter with some water buffalo, but 
they got wind of us and they took off running. So we built this little hide. They're known for coming through this little pass that we're sitting in front of. So we're gonna sit tight and wait for them to show up. And they've got a really sensitive sense of smell, but luckily the wind's perfect. You can feel it right on our faces. So uh, um, I think we should be good as far as that's concerned. Okay. All right. Well, now it's just a waiting game. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to take a shot unless I'm 100% confident. I just won't do it. Okay, good. There they are. They're starting to come in slowly. So we better get the gun ready and get into position. Okay, okay. i got to cock the hammer. Yeah. Maddie, there's the bull in the clearing. See how much bigger he is than the cows. Oh yeah, he's so black yeah, too. That's right, that's the very black one. It's 50 yards. He's standing broadside. That's it, that's him, yeah. You take him when you're ready. Okay, I'm on him. Okay. Here it goes. Oh, good hey, God. Like a good shot. Good penetration as well. I saw um, the arrow sticking out of him. Yeah. yeah, as he was running away, I could see it as well. It's a big animal, so... Um, Let's give it a bit of time, maybe give it like 20, 30 minutes and then we can follow up and, and track it. Okay. Wow. But, it, but it looked good. Okay. Okay. That yeah. was exciting, eh? Yeah. There wasn't a clean pass through, yeah. clearly, but mm. it looked like it was a good shot. So mm. we'll just give him some time and, and then go check on him in about 30 minutes. I think we're in minutes. good shape. Yeah. Hopefully. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> Okay, here he is. This is not only a magnificent water buffalo, but it's my first African game animal I've ever taken down. And I think I started off pretty big. This thing is huge. It is. It's about 2,000 pounds. That's a big animal. It's yeah. huge. It's going to be a pain in the butt to clean him, but mm. it's just been awesome. I use the air rifle. It's a 50 cal, and I put a pretty good shot on him, but I shot 50 yards out, which is, for an air rifle, it's not that bad, but when you're shooting an animal this big, you're not gonna get a lot of penetration, but it did the trick and we got him down. Look at these horns on him. He must be old. Yeah, he's at least eight years old, could be up to 10 years old. Just a really cool animal. I'm having an absolute blast and I'm excited to get to hunt more here at Hunter's Hill. Hopefully I'm gonna take down a Cape Buffalo. That is my next challenge. So. Stick around for an amazing hunt. If you're watching online, make sure and subscribe to our channel. If you're not watching online, head to our YouTube channel. It's High Road Hunting. And make sure and subscribe and check out all of our videos. We've got a lot of air gun stuff and a lot of African safaris. Maddie Warren here, and I just took down my first buffalo ever in Africa. And you might be wondering where it's going. It's going to Conroe Taxidermy, of course. They take care of all of our taxidermy needs, both at home in the States and abroad. All right, if you've never hunted in Africa, one of the things you need to know is that the animals are all super, super tough, which makes them hard to clean and it's hard on your knives. Cape buffalo and water buffalo are some of the toughest animals just because they live in such remote country. They're in the water, they get greasy, and their skin is kind of like a feral hog's but on steroids. So the knife that they're using, we let Eric borrow our Victor knife by Diamond Blade. And the reason why we let him borrow it is because the steel is so tough on it, it's friction forged, which makes the steel harder and it helps the blade's sharpness hold up longer. Hey Eric, how do you like the knife? This is good. Knife. You like it? Yes. Sir. Well, good. So my first hunt was a great success. Yes, I got the animal down, but I had a lot of fun with Johan. He made me feel comfortable and at ease because I was very nervous going into hunting such a big animal like that. My first time taking down something in Africa. A little bit nippy out there this morning. This will be perfect for what we have to do today. Look at all of them. Holy moly. They should be settling down just around the corner so we'll take a stroll around. Well, so you talk about a challenge. So much for being easy. This is good. The wind's in our favor. My gosh, look at them. So a good group of copper springback have just gone over here with a good ram in there. He's feeding it by himself. He 
Look at that, good stuff. <laughs> good awesome deal. stuff. Good deal. Thank you. Yeah, he's down. Thank you. All right, earlier in the show, you saw the before of these and a water buffalo that I took down in Africa. These spring buck my dad took down um, a couple of years ago, actually. And we're here at Conroe Taxidermy with Travis Simpson. He's a taxidermist, but he's also one of the brothers who owns this joint. So we're gonna walk you through the process because there's a lot that goes into it. And as hunters, I think we need to understand the art of taxidermy. And just, it, it's a whole new respect when you step in a place like this and see all of the steps. Yeah, so what we have here, these, have, these are at different levels. We've got the one that's just been mounted, one that's been prepped and ready for paint, and you can see these have got their paint on them. They gotta clean up the horns and do things like that and get it ready for paint. So we can take this one through the process if you'd like to see that. Yes, absolutely. I wanna see every step okay. possible. So Super. let's do it. Okay, so now what? So Maddie, what we're gonna do in, in this area, uh, Frankie and the guys, they prep the animals. They pull all the pins off, they pull the staples out, get, every, get the nose cleaned out, and they wire brush the horns and get it all ready for paint. They're gonna put some putty in here, wax around the eyes, and they're gonna get it ready for the paint guys. You'll see all the little blemishes on here will just disappear after the paint. But the guys here have gotta prepare it and get it ready for paint. Okay. So that's what Frankie's gonna do. So Mario's gonna end up put, painting this guy. It's all ready. The uh, sculpt all's dry, the wax around the eyes dry, it's, the horns are cleaned up and ready for him and he's gonna put the different colors on. And you'll see the, uh, the way that the, the paint comes on, it, it oversprays onto the hair, but the paint that he's using, he's gonna, after it's dry, he wipes it off of the hair and it sticks to the skin. So any little blemish, it sticks to that blemish, hides any little imperfections, and puts the natural color back to him. That's perfect. Yeah. All right, so you saw the other two spring buck were getting prepped, and these are what the final product of those two are gonna look like. You can see the details in the paint, there's no blemishes, but this is what the final product is supposed to look like and we'll have the other two back on here when they're done and we will have my dad's spring buck slam, which can't wait to see his face whenever this is in the lodge. So if y'all have any questions or comments, you know what to do, post them below. And if you've got something that you want worked on, whether it's something you just shot and you need a taxidermist or you have an old piece of art of taxidermy work that you need work on, give Conroe Taxidermy a call or shoot them a message. What can they call? Good phone number? 281-367-2745. Yeah, call them. You won't be disappointed, I promise.